reduced their reliance on human infantry. As I said before, we have no further comment to make at this time. We will continue to explore avenues of diplomatic negotiations. The WA have denied sending troops to the region, stating that they are still seeking a diplomatic solution to the standoff. You know in The Matrix they say that deja vu happens when they change something, but for me deja vu happens in November, when I'm playing whatever new Call of Duty game has been released for the year. And here we are again with Call of Duty Black Ops 3, that's right the third game in the Black Ops series. Because this is Thriller, Thriller Night, and no one's going to save you from the beast about to strike. Released for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and lastly the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, just to squeeze every last dime possible out of the consumer. The story in Black Ops 3 takes place in 2065 at a point when it seems that everyone in the world is just constantly shooting at each other. And robots are programmed to rip people's arms off and bludgeon them to death instead of killing them mercifully. I guess the Geneva Convention doesn't mean shit in 2065. Anyway, you play as one such soldier who finds himself beaten to near death by a robot before being rebuilt as Robot Jesus and working with the guy from Law and Order, before a conspiracy is uncovered involving a CIA operation responsible for the death of 300,000 people. You can expect lots of explosions, chase sequences and people shouting at each other. It go on to revolutionize a broad range of military and civilian applications. At least, it would have if the train had reached its destination. There's also a subplot about how the characters can use their robot hands to read people's minds to gain critical information, but frying their brains in the process. And they almost seem like they're going to tackle the morality of whether this is justified for the greater good, but ultimately this message got lost under all the other stuff I just had trouble following. Treyarch must have had some sort of strong female character quoted to fill because it seems most female characters you encounter are the tough take no prisoner types who kick more ass than most of the male characters do. You'll hear female cries of pain frequently during the game as well as you encounter and subsequently kill loads of women soldiers in the field. You can actually choose as either a male or female protagonist as well, which I believe is also a first for the series. Overall, it's a really unique story. It's like a mix of Ghost in the Shell, Deus Ex, District 9 and Crisis. And it is very unique visually with the various designs for all the robots, military paraphernalia and weaponry. I had no issues running the game on the high settings with practically no frame rate drops both before and after I updated my drivers. But I have seen a lot of people online saying they're having performance issues, but with an i7, a 780Ti and 16GB of RAM, the game held a steady frame rate most of the time. The cutscenes showcase some superb facial animations and character models, and during gameplay there's a whole heap of cinematic effects during some of the game's scripted sequences. And it also sounds incredible, with meaty weapon effects, impactful explosions, and a half-decent soundtrack to boot. I noticed a few murky textures and animalities with facial animations, but overall it does look quite good. Not as good as Advanced Warfare, but still decent enough. Being half-robot, you get access to a bunch of different abilities, what the game refers to as Cybercores. These are broken up into three different modes, with it only allowing you to choose one at a time. Now this can be frustrating, as modes are either tailored towards fighting humans or robotic enemies. So depending on which mode you opt for, it can leave you lacking when you encounter the opposite enemy type. I found that only a few of these are genuinely all that useful, you know, things like jamming enemies' weapons or causing robots to temporarily shut down, whilst the others felt gimmicky and experimental. The ideas are cool though, like, you know, ripping out a robot's power core and using it as a grenade. But a few of the cybercores are dependent on you being within close range to your opponents, something that seldom happens, particularly on the higher difficulties. And others are so specific that you really have to force yourself into the right situation to use them, compared to it happening naturally through playing the game. Mostly though, they're just not all that effective, considering most enemies die pretty quickly from basic weaponry anyway, including the robots, so playing around with these abilities is often done out of curiosity than necessity. Lastly, there's the expected parkour moves like wall running and climbing up ledges, again hardly a game changer and something that doesn't affect the campaign all that much anyway. The single player mode uses a leveling up system, also able to be played entirely in co-op, though I've yet to even find a match going. Leveling up allows you to access new weapons to use in the campaign and also to unlock new cyber cores. Higher difficulties and achieving multiple objectives also increases the XP gained. 
like every Call of Duty game before it, there's not really anything wrong with this campaign. It's just got that familiar feeling of been there, done that. There is a couple of cool moments, but it's really just filling up the other half of the package that isn't the ranked multiplayer mode. I think we got it. Looks like it's down for good. And yes, like every single shooting game we've had released in the past decade, Black Ops 3 comes with that obligatory ranked multiplayer mode. But wait, this one's different. In this one, you choose from a series of specialists who each have unique abilities and weapons, operating on a cooldown mechanic. Modes include Team Deathmatch, Kill Confirmed, Domination, but of course you already knew that. Now look, I understand that for some people, each new Call of Duty is really what makes their gaming year for this mode alone, but I just don't get the appeal of it. On a technical front, I had no issues. The game ran smoothly, I had no connection issues or any of that kind of thing, but the underlying problem is that it's just so fucking boring. And it shits me up the wall that it is literally the same rehashed crap in every single game. You know, running around like you hopped up on energy drink, shooting everything you see. Leveling up every now and then before doing the same thing for three or four maps as the cycle repeats. The matchmaking is still horrible, putting high level players on one team and lower level players on another, but I still think the biggest issue is the maps themselves. All of the maps are these large realistic locations with so many vantage points, entryways and opened up areas that there is just so little strategy to them. You just kinda run around hoping not to get shot in the back, ultimately killed and beaten by people who have the luxury of playing this thing for far longer than I ever could. I know I'm both preaching to the choir and also whistling in the wind with this because most people either wholeheartedly agree with me or are so addicted to this mode that they probably hear the sound of hit markers in their sleep. Now look, I'm not insulting the people who enjoy this. If it is your cup of tea, then you know, more power to you. But don't delude yourself into thinking that Black Ops 3 somehow does anything different. Because it doesn't. There's a new Zombies mode as well, which has a unique film noir tone, also including characters voiced by Ron Perlman, Jeff Goldblum, and Heather Graham. And I'd love to talk about this mode, but at the moment, the matchmaking doesn't even seem to work. And playing with yourself is only entertaining for so long. Overall, Black Ops 3 is about all you'd expect from a Call of Duty game. It's got your standard six or so hour campaign and attacked on multiplayer mode, largely tailored towards adolescence which is also kind of funny considering the game is rated R18. And much like those instructions on the back of a shampoo bottle, this plays out much in the same way. You squeeze some into your hair, you rub it through for a little bit, you wash it out and then you repeat next year. I wouldn't recommend Black Ops 3, but I would recommend a Reuben sandwich. It has cheese, meat, sauerkraut, and it's served on rye bread. It provides your body with protein, carbohydrates, and fiber, which has more of a benefit to you than this game ever possibly could. Focus on the turret. I'll draw their 